Hello everyone. Today we are presenting our final year project title investigating the feasibility of a real-time sweat analysis system based on electrospan textiles for the research week 2021 of University of Montreal. We are from the Department of Textile and Apparel Engineering. I am Hansika and my group mate Tarshi will be continuing the rest of the presentation. The outline for today's presentation is the introduction, literature review, the methodology, results and discussion, and the conclusion. To give a brief introduction to our project, based on the issues in conventional blood and urine sampling, such as those mentioned here, we decided to look at sweat sampling, where the sweat concentration levels of a healthy individual have been validated through different literature, with these average concentration levels constituting to towards these different sensing parameters. So based on these, we decided to fabricate a variable platform for sweat sampling with the advantages of it being worn close to the skin to collect effective date body data while mitigating consumers through early detection while meeting the challenges of conventional invasive sampling. The aim of our project was to develop a textile incorporated platform that performs real-time non-invasive sampling, analysis and presentation of components present in humans excreted sweat while achieving these objectives. Now for the literature review. Through our literature review, we identified these research opportunities that align with the scope of our project. I did find the necessity of non-invasive sampling. Such sampling was chosen out of these options due to its direct correlation with blood by recognizing the challenges and limitations of such sampling. However, these wide spaces can be addressed with incorporating a textile. The analysis was explored based on the sweat concentration out of these options. So building on the above research opportunities, we looked at the existing models to understand the fluid flow kinetics through porous mediums, such as those that are mentioned here. Next, we navigated to more textile related structures in terms of woven and knitted to better understand how the fluid flow kinetics take place. Here, the research gap was identified as the lack of models to predict the concentration ranges of compounds that are present in a liquid through porosity analysis of the fabric medium. Now for the solution hypothesis. The platform was fabricated using three different layers. This is the overall methodology that we followed for fabrication of the wellness device. Next, for the optimization of the surface properties of the active layer, process A, which comprises of direct electrospinning, and process B, which comprises of electrospinning, and then RGO dip coating were followed with respect to the steps that are presented here. What you can see here in A, B, C, D are the different steps that were followed. In this video, you can see the absorption of the ions under the ion surface. And with this schematic representation, you can see how sweat is transported through the fabric layers from skin to the atmosphere. This is a kind of high-level overview of the mathematical model that we derived, where we initially calculated the pore volume, next the absorbed volume, and also the necessary calculation to calculate the amount of sweat volume that is being collected onto the active layer which was followed by calculating the area of the, that is being covered by sweat and also the surface conductivity where the different parameters were calculated then separately to build the final mathematical derivation that you can see here where we can find the relationship between the surface conductivity with respect to the transported sweat volume. This was simulated and then experimentally validated which will be presented in the upcoming slides. Since sweat is an electrolyte solution based on Arrhenius theory and with the potential voltage difference, cations and anions in sweat are separated, creating a conductivity path with an ion movement. Then the conductive voltage patch in the platform and the sweat solution act as two resistors connected in series where the voltage can be measured based on voltage divided principle. These are the assumptions and limitations of the derived mathematical model. Due to the above limitations of the mathematical model, the proposed sweat analysis system is limited in monitoring the sweat components which dissolves completely in sweat. Now for the results and discussion. The conceptual design versus the actual fabrication. The principle was based on a voltage divided circuit and the encircled area was fabricated as shown in figure B and figure C. 
to determine whether you used to send electrospun membrane or to do direct electrospinning onto the fabric, both samples were done and observed using optical microscopy. As you can see, there is no significant difference in the surface morphology. However, to provide advocate strength to uphold the mesh which has been subjected to pressure applications during assembly and end use, we recommend to use a PCL mesh that has been spun onto the fabric. For the incorporation of conductivity, two methods can be followed. As you can see here, process A is direct electrospinning of RG and PCL, while process B is electrospinning of PCL followed by a deep coating of RGO. From the visual assessment, we can see that process B yields a higher coverage and better distribution of RGO particles. From the optical microscopy results, we saw that the particles have aggregated in process A, yielding poor distribution. This was followed by an SEM analysis where in process E you can see the samples from direct electrospinning, process B samples from the electrospinning plus deep coating process. The results show that process B gives a better coverage and distribution of RGO flakes. Coverage and distribution is important as this constitutes towards the conductivity of the fabricated surface. The fiber diameters were observed under SEM analysis where a lower fiber diameter was obtained for process A. A higher diameter provides a higher surface area for the ions to adsorb onto. This means that the number of mobile ions in the solution is now less. In turn, the surface conductivity will now be lower. Additionally, the contact angles of the fibers are more uniform in process B. This indicates a more uniform distribution of RG or PCL. Finally, when measuring the surface resistivity, Process B was lower, pertaining to higher conductivity, and as a result of all the observations that were made above. This proves that process B is the best option to go forward. Next, in situ analysis was conducted. Next, sample solutions were prepared by extrapolating downwards from 0.07 M, which is the bottom range of sodium plus ions of a healthy individual. As, as you can see, the average fluctuation amounts to about 0.01 volts per second. Similarly, the top cutoff range is 0.04 M and samples were prepared as shown, resulting in higher fluctuations. The voltage values received for two separate concentration ranges from the lower end and the higher end were compared to establish the sensitivity of the measurement. The results show that 10 volt per mole can be achieved from the fabricated platform. The voltage fluctuations observed earlier can thereby be considered as negligible. The moisture management properties were evaluated as follows. According to the moisture management test results, higher wicking and minimal absorbency were achieved by the 100% polyester fabric, which was chosen as the skin layer, where 6535 fabric was used as the active layer in the fabrication, which required moderate wicking and higher absorbency. This is a summary of the obtained results. Now we will be presenting the simulated analysis of the mathematical model. As per the MATLAB simulation, A shows the correlation between the localized area and the surface conductivity where the gradient as you can see is very low. In figure B and D, the conductivity decreases with the increase of the yarn diameter and yarn count as now the surface area for iron molecules to adsorb is higher. Figure C shows how the conductivity increases with the time as a higher number of moles now enters the platform while the adsorption amount remains intact. Now for the conclusions and recommendations. As part of our conclusions and recommendations, we recommend using sweat sampling as the most effective biovital for non-invasive sampling. And this composition is recommended for effective moisture management results while using a plain knit construction for better confirmation to the hand. A linear model can be maintained up to a concentration of 0.01 M while the sensitivity of 10 volts per mole and fluctuation of 0.1 volts per second can be observed through experimental analysis. The maximum current that is passing through the platform was amounted to be 0.645 mA, where the tolerance limit is 5 mA validating the safety of the users. Recommendations for future developments are focused on enhancing the conductivity, reducing bulkiness, energy harvesting, and enhancing the product longevity. Our work was presented in the following journal and conference papers. Thank you.